Hi everyone, welcome back in Lockdown Cooking. Um, in today's lesson, we're going to try to replicate Oreo biscuits. We all like these Oreo biscuits. Um, so this is going to be my mission today. Let's see if I can do it. I've got one little problem though. I only have normal cocoa powder um, and ideally for Oreo biscuits because you want them really dark and you want to have this dark chocolate taste, you need dark cocoa powder, okay? So if you want to do this, um, get dark cocoa powder. I just use what I have in the cupboard, it's locked down, so this is what I'm going to use today. Okay, so what do we need? We will need 115 grams of um, softened butter. Um, as you can see, I've just diced them in little uh, bits like this, just to make them soft a bit quicker. And when I'm going to cream my butter in a minute, it's going to go faster. All right, so 115, 115 gram. Um, then we need 100 gram of uh, sugar, just normal caster sugar, 100 grams. Um, then we will need 125 grams of just normal plain flour. Um, no raisin flour, no strong flour, just plain flour. Um, we will then need also 75 gram of cocoa powder. Remember, dark cocoa powder, if you have it, that's going to be better. One egg and a quarter uh, of a teaspoon of um, baking soda. Um, also, for the filling, we will need icing sugar for this one. 120 grams of icing sugar. Um, we will need a little bit of vanilla extract, of course, and then 60 grams of butter that I've prepared here as well. That's for the filling, that's not strictly. Okay, so, let's get cooking. I've tied my hair up, I've washed my hands. Let's get going. Right, so first thing we do is we're going to do something that is called creaming your butter. Right, so we're going to use the back of a teaspoon and we're going to um, basically just mix our butter with our sugar together until it becomes nice and fluffy. As you can see, my butter is a little bit sticky. That means that it has, like, it is at room temperature. Okay. Put the sugar in there. There we go. So remember, when you are um, creaming your butter, is use the back of your teaspoon, just like this. And as you can see, every time I'm using my bowl, I'm trying to, um, I'm, li I'm tilting my bowl, just easier just to work it. Um, I wouldn't be able to access the flat surface of my uh, bowl here by doing so. Um, so just tilt it and I can just flatten this butter, work my butter, mix it with my sugar. Just, don't worry, there's a bit of mess. If my butter was not at room temperature, um, this would have been a little bit more exhausting to do. Um, and would have taken a little bit longer. Alright. Don't know if you can see on the camera, nice and fluffy. Alright. Next one, my egg. Okay, wash my hands quickly. Okay, now some people say whisk your egg on the sides, that's just more mess. I'll do it just in my boy here. Just we spoil it like this and then mix it with more butter. Okay, next job done. Now we would like let's start with this one before I forget it. A quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda, really not that much. Because this teaspoon should be this one. There you go. Okay. 
then we're going to use a sieve. We're going to sieve our cocoa powder. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember when we're sieving, just give it like a gentle little tap like this, and it does it by itself. Smell of cocoa is really good. Good. Next one, get my flour in. Mm -hmm. Combine everything together now. Oh, being a bit clumsy. Okay, I'm going to finish this off with my hands. Gonna be easier. Don't hesitate if you want to put your hands in there, that works. Okay, I'm starting to have a really big lump now. Mm -hmm. Great. You can see, this looks a bit like brownies, and it smells like brownies too, to be honest. All right. Wash my hands. Okay. Um, put some cling film on the table here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put. Um, my little dough here in cling film and leave it in the fridge for an hour, maybe two hours. The reason I do this is afterwards when I'm going to roll it with a rolling pin, it's not going to be too sticky, um, it's just going to be easier to, to manipulate and put on my trays to put, uh, to put in the oven. Alright, so there you go. What I'll do, can you see it? There you go. Well, I'll just make a little lump like this, square, there you go, hop, 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 just like that, let's check in the fridge for an hour or two, and forget about it for the time being. Okay, what I can do in the meantime, is prepare my filling while I'm waiting. Um, so, for the filling, um, we will need 120 grams of icing sugar and we will need 60 grams of softened butter. I did exactly the same way as I've done um, before. So, let's get another spoon out. All right, let's put this one here. Put my softened butter in here. You can see icing sugar or powdered sugar gets really messy because it goes everywhere. Um, we will need also a bit of vanilla extract. Um, now you can put a teaspoon if you like vanilla. You can put a little bit more. That's fine.
Yo. Mm. On the extra, it just makes it just delicious. Okay. That's it. Nothing more on that for the moment. You don't have to put this one in the fridge. Um, just leave it like this. And um, I'll see you back in an hour or two. Okay, everyone, we're back in the kitchen an hour and a half later. Let's have a look at what happened with our little lump of cookie dough. There you go. Works on it right, really hard. So, what we're going to do now is we are going to roll this one out on the table. Table is clean, by the way. Make sure it's of yours too. All right, um, we're going to roll this dough like, well, let's say, half a centimeter thick. All right, so five mil. Let's just do it like this. And you see it because it's quite cold. It doesn't stick to my, um, uh, my rolling pin. Alright, now. As you can see, I don't like to use this one because it's kind of bent. I use the weight of my shoulder when I'm rolling it. Proof paper on two trays. I might maybe need one. I just did two just in case. Um, if you don't have a cookie cutter at home, um, you can use just a champagne glass that would be like roughly the size of our Oreo biscuits. So, what I like to do is if I push it in and I twist it a bit, you see what I mean, just a little bit, I can create a nice little hole there. Okay, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. So, what I'll do is I I tend to keep all my little biscuits really close to each other. It's going to be easier. It's already coming out by itself, just like that. If you do, if you keep them closer, um, it just saves you a lot of work. That's why I'm doing it. Okay, so I got my little circles. I'm going to put them on my grease proof paper, let's just say one centimeter apart from each other, something like this. Because they will kind of like expand a little bit. Second one, good thinking. There you go. All right, as you can see, I have scraps here, and I will just roll it again. And since I'll, I'll be working, this dough is going to be a little bit warmer. You will probably see that it will be a bit more sticky on my rolling pin. Definitely this hard. Right, let's continue. So you see, I push, I twist a bit. Okay, so I've got my two trays done here. Um, I'm going to put these ones in the oven at 160, 160 160 degrees for 15 minutes. Um, what I will do is 
I will rotate them also halfway through so the ones at the bottom will always cook a little bit slower so we just if you rotate your trays everything cooks evenly okay so off we go let's put out the oven See you in 15 minutes, 1-5. All right, the alarm went, let's take them out. There you go, nice. Yeah, they look fantastic. All right, and now the beauty with your baking tray, uh, sorry, with your greaseproof paper, is that you can actually transfer everything just like this. There you go, saves you a bit of time. Oh, same with the other one. Okay, now we are going to have to wait till these ones have cooled down before we start to put our buttercream on it and all this whole thing will melt. So let's just wait half an hour or something like this. Um, I tend to uh, put them outside in the shade with a bit of air, just goes a bit faster. So I'll see you very soon for the last part of this video. Okay, okay, last and final part of our Oreo biscuit making, uh, which is putting our fillings in between uh, these ones and just sandwich them together. Uh, as you can see, I changed t-shirts. It's not because I'm doing this two days later. I just have been doing all the washing up and I had a bit of a, a washing up disaster. I got completely wet. So that's why I've got on the t-shirts now. All right, so got my buttercream here. And I just need a buttering knife. Take one of my biscuits and just smear it all over like this. Don't put too much. All right. And now, and if you sandwich it, just like that, you have all your biscuits. If you have a bit too much going on the side, you can just take it off like that. And off we go, keep going. Popular factory work here. Sandwich. Look at this. Hi, sir. All right. Come on, I'm going to do two more. Mm. All right, and the last one, and then I'll stop filming for today. And this is how we make Oreo biscuits, people. All right, should we give it a try? didn't turn out to be too bad with my normal cocoa powder. Um, it's actually really good. Mm. Alright, well, give it a go, give it a try. It's really good, it's a bit time consuming, but if you have time, 
Just get on with it and you're going to make everyone happy in your family. Okay? That was it for today. How to make homemade Oreo biscuits. I hope you enjoy it. Please send me the pictures and we'll try to post them on the Virtual Hall of Fame. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe and see you later. Thank you.